Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. If you're new to uh, The Creative Cove, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Um, today I am playing with uh, snippet rolls. Now I've never actually made these before. Um, I caught the tail end of a video and I can't remember who it was. It was the last couple of minutes because I had to leave for work, but um, I thought what a fun idea. And I know snippet rolls are nothing new. People have made them before, but um, I really wanted to give it a try. And of course I have a million scraps. So I wanted to try a couple of different things. So uh, today's tutorial is really just going to be building snippet rolls with me and then just uh, kind of seeing how I put things together and everybody glues their own things in their own way, their own method. Um, but one of the ones I did was um, what I really want to try today with you guys is the adding uh, just scraps of watercolor paper. So we might do that. I don't know where we're going to go. I don't know what I'm going to make yet. I'll, I'll, it will kind of depend on what's left on my desk here. But what I did basically was I follow this kind of snippet roll method of gluing it to scrap paper. And then I left chunks of solid paper so that I could go back and paint on them. And what I really like about this idea is you, if you go with a neutral tone, like most of my work is, when you go back to decorate it with the watercolor, uh, you can then add whatever color applies to the journal you're working on. So if you're working on something that's got a lot of green in it, you can add green watercolor paint. So it kind of turns the, the snippet roll to something um, more geared to what you need to use. So you leave it blank until you're ready to use it. Like you leave, you leave the color off until you're ready to use it, I mean. Um, and I thought what a really fun way to use up kind of scraps of stamp, practicing stamps or uh, your sketches if you're doing quickie sketches with me, and I hope you are. Um, just a really good way of using up little quickie sketches. And if you've worked really hard and you've done a sketch you love, of course, you can always photocopy your sketches so you're not using the originals. These are all originals in here um, because I have so many. <laughs> I have so many, so many sketches kicking around that I thought this would be a really fun way to use them. Um, so this is another version of using all these little quickie sketches and mixtures of scrap papers. Here's a quickie sketch that was ripped in half. It was one of my labels, so I just rip it in half and stick it down. A little mushroom sketch, flower sketch, all these little, so there's the top end of this one. Uh, there it is there, and it keeps going and going. And, uh, and then basically you sew them together. So the sewing works really well, especially when you're using a heavier paper. And then you just cut these up and use them in your journals whenever you need them. So that's the other one I did. And then this one had a bit of a bird theme going on, so I went with it. I had these cute little bird cutouts. Um, so then I left some plain ones so that I could draw some feathers in. So I drew some feathers in after and just filled up some blank. And what's fun is you can leave these areas blank. And I'll show you my what my train of thought is when I'm building these is uh, is that you can add things to them once you've got a theme that you're working with. So that is that. So those are three there. I'm gonna move those out of the way for a second and roll them up and put them away after. Um, so here's some scraps. <laughs> I don't wanna use that. So I've got scraps all over the place. Um, again, using up some sketches. This is a photocopy, this one. Um, all kinds of paper. So I'm going to get rid of anything that has color in it because, I, like I said, I want to stay neutral. I want to make sure that I do have... Oh, I've got stuff everywhere. So this is watercolor paper, so we'll use that. So let's, uh, let's rip some things up. So if you have a pile of little scraps like this, that's great because then you're pretty much ready to go. Um, here's some labels, so uh, I peel these off and rip them, and that gives me a place to draw. And let's just break some of these down so it's just a little bit more manageable sizes. And these are just scraps out of old books. I mean, you use whatever scraps you've got kicking around. And I just, I just rip them into random sizes. Now, none of my stuff is inked then whatever is inked was already inked if that makes sense on my uh now you can take the time and ink all this and it would look even 
more nice if that's where if that's the way you're saying it because um if you're using colored paper it will really help separate all those pieces but because my papers are already kind of got that inky vintage vibe look to them because they're old i'm not gonna bother inking i'm just gonna go with the flow here and i also don't want the video to be too too long and knowing me i'll get a little carried away <laughs> so one thing i did notice about this process is the amount of glue that you go through you do go through a significant amount of glue stick so use the cheapy stuff if you have it because you're going to sew this down anyways one you want to kind of thin cheap glue because then it doesn't gunk up your sewing machine as easily and here's a little birdie from a i guess from a bird book <laughs> so you can you know rip these up like this and, and use them. If you, so what's really nice about these snippet rolls is you really can build a theme. So I'm not gonna do all of those. So if you if you know you're gonna be doing a, a book about birds or butterflies, you can build these snippet rolls into different themes and different colors, which is really fun. And then you have this ready on hand to just cut up and use. You can make tags out of the snippet rolls. You can make covers they're really pretty versatile is what i'm finding anyways so i won't do all of this but i do want a little bit to work with so i don't have to stop and rip more and i'm just just doing random size i will rip more as i go um i have as you can see my palette is neutral it's just what i'm drawn to but there's no harm in adding colors um, what I look for in my papers is a blank paper and a textured paper with lots of print on it. You'll notice too that I'm ripping mine more into rectangles and squares. Uh, you don't have to. You can keep this kind of shape. But the look I like is more, what's the word? Uh, more deliberate, I guess. I like things to look uh, as random as it looks. I like the edges and if you know if you've been following my channel lately you know I'm right into borders so squares and rectangles make the most sense for my version of creativity but again you're gonna go with whatever you feel comfortable with there's some um, you can add wording into yours you can if you don't want to do sketching or watercolor you could of course use whatever ephemera you have You've got little things kicking around that you can glue in. Um, it's all about building layers and textures. And in this case, a bit of a theme. So I'm not sure what this theme's going to be yet. I'm going to kind of feel it out as I go. I think that's a good start. So we've got, we've got a pile here. <laughs> maybe too much. And then I have some other sketches. So maybe the theme will be botanical. Shocker, right? That's pretty much my go-to. I love botanical. So I'm just going to push that out of the way so you can still see it. And then I just had a, a sheet, a music sheet. That was the longest book I had. And I just tore it into, say, about two and a half inches wide. And this is my start. This is my base. And I get my trusty glue out. I want to make sure that I am on video here. It's a bit deceiving. I'm going to slide over a bit keep pushing stuff out of the way you're gonna get messy with the glue um, you can take your time and glue neatly uh, but I am a very messy glue person so I just start by throwing down whatever I pick up and what I like about these is I don't I don't stress I don't worry about how it looks I, I pretty much pick up a piece and glue it the more I think about it the slower the process comes for me. Now this glue is not very sticky for some reason. I have another glue stick. Okay, let's try this one. I don't know why that's not sticky. I know it's cheap glue, but it should stick. <laughs> it's the whole purpose of glue. And I just keep picking up pieces and putting them down so I can play a little bit with it. But the idea is just to move quickly because what you might glue down, you might cover in two seconds. And I try not to overthink uh, 
the process because then it becomes a chore. I just like to have fun and stick it down and not think about it. So I'll put something like this and then I might play a little just to see if I like it the other way. But that's the most thinking I do. So for this, I think maybe we will do a botanical theme. So here's some grasses. Let's do some botanicals. And I have some sketches of botanicals somewhere that we can use up. Just got to dig them out and we can play with those. Just to make sure I'm on camera here. And where did I put those? They're in a little book I sewed. Hmm. I know I took them out because I know I wanted to use them. Here they are. So here's a little envelope. I sewed this little envelope with scrap paper because I thought it would be kind of a fun project. I might show a video on that. So I keep all my little mini sketches in here. So here's some botanicals. Now these are originals. I've already photocopied them and scanned them. Uh, well, not photocopied them, but I've scanned them on the computer. So now I'll, I'm just going to use them because uh, I don't want them sitting around forever. So I'm just going to throw it on here because I have now my sketch somewhere else. I don't have to worry too much about keeping the original. I, I'm not going to use them all, but I'll use some. And then I wanted to use some of that watercolor paper because I want to make sure we can I can show you that process as well. So this is just cheap watercolor paper, nothing fancy. The cheapest you can get from the dollar store, but it absorbs water nicely enough that we can add it to our snippet rolls here and have some fun. So maybe I put something like this here. And then we can either, you can just sketch on it, you know, you can stamp on it as well. So if you don't want to draw, you can use one of your stamps and you just keep building up and building up. And I find this process really relaxing. I just sit here and, and play with the glue and have fun sticking stuff together and seeing where it takes me. So you can see that uh, edges will roll up and that's the kind of nature of the way I glue because I don't, I don't really take a lot of time gluing things down properly. And that's where the sewing machine comes in. So I'll just throw that on there. Fun piece of texture on that one. And what else have we got? And I just keep gluing. So I like to go between plain and busy and of course a neutral palette so if you're brand new to snippet rolls or brand new to doing any kind of glue down cluster like this uh, what I would recommend then starting with uh, would be something like picking your papers uh, so first choose a palette of paper that you like colors that appeal to you things you're drawn to you know for me obviously it's neutrals uh, but maybe you like pink and maybe you like lots and lots of textured florals. Um, what you want to do is gather that and then just kind of limit it to a certain amount of color so that you're not overwhelmed by choice because it's very easy to be overwhelmed uh, when you have a lot of options in front of you. Um, just want to make sure I spread out so I've got all my options available here. And I just layer. So that would be my my first suggestion would be to pick your color palette um, and simplify it. So have a main color, say pink, and then have some neutral colors. And then the second thing would be looking at the, the texture that's involved in those papers. Are they all super, super busy? Oops, my glasses. Are they all super busy textures? Are they very boring and plain, like with very little texture on them? And when I say texture, it's not a three-dimensional texture. I mean, the texture in these papers are made by the writings. So the different writing and the different prints and the lines and all that stuff, they all lend uh, texture. So those are the things you want to look for when you're choosing your papers. Because you don't want it so busy that you can't see anything. So the more neutral you work 
the easier it is to add something after. So now you can, let's say you like the fussy cuts of butterflies. Now, because this paper's not overly busy, the butterflies will really show up. Just like the sketches here will. I wanna put a piece of watercolor here. But you can see it goes through a lot of glue stick. So use the cheapy stuff. So all I do is take another piece of my long paper. Where'd I put that? <laughs> I buried that now. Oh boy. I don't know where I put it. I thought I put it to the side. This one's a bit too flimsy. I just add the next, oh here it is. I did put it to the side, right in front of my face. So I had the next piece of paper. So I flip it over in this case, and I'm just gonna glue it to the back side of this one. And you can make these rolls as long as you want. And just keep gluing away. So I'm just gonna do a little more here. We'll finish, we'll finish this full roll. If you wanna hang out with me for a bit. And you can see my glue stick is not is cheap, so it's really not gluing things down well, but it's holding it enough that I can throw it through my sewing machine after. One thing you do want to bear in mind if you're going to sketch with a pen or uh, watercolor is you don't want to put too much glue all over because glue seals things, so water and paint and ink won't penetrate the paper. So you do want to be careful of that. All right. And I just keep having fun. So I'm going to put on this guy now. I'll put him up here maybe. So I did a video on how to draw these little guys. So you can practice away at your drawing. Any opportunity I have to add drawings to my work, I take. Because I just I like to doodle. Some old music paper here. You do want to use uh, paper that's not overly fragile either. Um, especially if it overhangs the edge. So you can make it really even. Like glue even. So you can put another piece here to make it even with this piece. But uh, it's up to you what kind of snippet roll you want. If you want something very square, then go for it. There's no road or wrong here. And just have fun sticking it down. And like I said, you're gonna come across things where you really like them. You can save them for the very top. Seeing if uh, I have anything more interesting. Then what I have already, here's a piece here, it's kind of fun. Um, and then maybe we can use the stickers. So I've got some lilies here. Oh, I like this one. So we're doing a botanical theme. So these are, again, stickers I've just drawn on. I have a lot of them. So I don't want to use the whole sticker, it's a bit much. So I'm going to rip it. And again, just use this part of the texture and introduce that. And of course it's a sticker, so it's already stuck, which is great. And I use all the sticker. Rip it up any way I want. And again, it doesn't make sense. The stem's going this way on the snippet roll, but again, it's uh, just adding texture. Here's a word. So where do we want the word? Let's put the word over here. Right here. Okay, so there you go. You can just keep playing. Use up your sketches. Use up your scraps. Let's do a little bit more gluing here. And so here's a little bit of color here. So you can you introduce a little bit of pink if you want. You know, a little bit of blues, a little bit of greens. I think maybe I will use some of this green. I don't think I want to use the pink. But the, the green could be nice. So it's now torn in a different edge, which I don't like. Again, I like my stuff square right now. I'm gonna I like things kind of symmetrical. I don't know, not even symmetrical, but 
It's like edges these days and like straight edges. And that's changed because I used to like all the torn, unpredictable edges. But this seems to be my mood right now is this square and rectangle. <laughs> Don't ask me why. And I'm just using a popsicle stick. Not very effectively by the looks of it. That is not square. I can't cut straight and I can't tear straight. <laughs> so we'll just tear that off. Just to introduce a little bit of green so you get the idea of which what directions you can go in this. Because when we do the watercolor, we can add the green. And there's a bit of a green tinge to these sketches. And let this go down here. All right. Are you in frame? Yep. Yeah. Okay, we'll do this little part. And then I can show you how you can either use watercolor to decorate this, you can use a pen, or you can just use some stickers, whatever you have, whatever you're comfortable with. I do try to encourage people to draw and sketch and have fun with that. I think we'll do another piece of watercolor in here. Yeah, bigger one. Let's put some other paper down first, just so the watercolor paper sits on top. And then we can put this here. So this will need a lot of glue just to hold in place before it gets sewn because it's a significantly thick piece of paper. It's quite a heavy cardstock. Hold that for a sec while I look for something else. So well, maybe we'll use uh, one of these lilies. So I'm gonna put this here. Put it right there. Put that in here. And over here. Now because this is sticky on the other side, I'm just going to put a piece of paper behind it. Hold that in place just so that those don't stick to everything. Oh, that's really pretty. Got to use that. That's going to fit nicely in botanical. <laughs> and again, you can build any theme you like. So I just stumbled across the birds when I did the burnt theme, but I really liked it. Oh, that's a double piece. Um, but I really liked it. So now I have a bird theme snippet roll ready to rock if I do a birdie journal, which I often do because I love birds. And now that I live in Muskoka, Ontario, um, I'm further north, so I'm curious to see what kind of birds I'm going to find now. All right, I'm just gonna finish down this end real quick, just so it's done. And then let me just pull this off. Okay, so now I'm gonna look back and see if there's anything I want to maybe add. So for example, if you have little words um, or you have words in books that you used and you wanna highlight those words, I like to take plain paper like this where there's a big space and just put tiny pieces in. And that's where I can glue my little words or my little butterfly cutouts or whatever it is I might have on hand. So every now and then I'll find something, a spot where I can add a little, little plain piece. And it breaks up these patterns as well and gives you that layered effect over and over again, which is nice in my opinion. <laughs> okay, I think that's good. So we'll put the lid on this glue if I can find it. Oh, look at that, I found it. And uh, let's do like a little sketch here. And then we'll do two techniques. So we'll do a little sketch and we'll do the watercolor. So for the watercolor, for example, uh, right here. So it's, I'm doing a more of a botanical feel. So I'm just gonna do a quick loose sketch of something. So if you have 
something on your desk that you want to here's this here's some of those leaves maybe we'll just do something like that so we'll i just do a loose leaf and again if you're not into sketching this is where you can get your stamps out and you can stamp and if you want a watercolor just make sure that they're the kind of stamps that the kind of ink that doesn't uh bleed with water and so i'm just doing a leaf here and just a quick sketch like all my sketch videos are and then we could do another little one going off the page and just have fun building up your snippet roll and then we'll go over here and maybe we'll do some I don't know let's do uh, let's just do a simple little vine so I've got this one curving this way I think I'll do something curving this way like this and a leaf and another leaf and another leaf going this way and then another one and then one up here and then you can do like little dots kind of like little seeds or something helpful in that negative space Okay, we'll go down to the next one here. And what should we do in this one? Mm, what do we feel like? So we've done leaves, maybe we should do a flower in this one. So we'll do something like a uh, Cosmo, something loose. So I'm gonna just do a feathery kind of flower here. I don't even know what that is, <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> And this could curl up on itself. So I do have videos on how to draw flowers and things like that. And again, they have this very loose approach that I'm using right now. But it's the watercolor that's going to shine here. Okay, so there's our snippet roll so far. So let me push this out of the way so you actually see what is glued to the paper and what is not since I have so much going on here. Okay, so am I in camera view here? Yeah, I believe so. All right, so you got your water. Just use some water and your watercolors or watered down acrylics, whatever you have. And um, I don't have my ink out, but I do have this, like my spray ink, but I do have the brushed corduroy here. Oh no, that's... I think that's vintage photo, but that'll do. So I'm just gonna water that a little bit. This is a really old one. And I like to use inks, these distressed inks, um, in my like watercolor. I have a video on how I use a, them in different ways, um, but I really like using them in watercolor. So I've done a pink one already, so I think I'll do maybe some blue in this one. So I'm gonna get into my watercolor palette here and just mix up some pretty blue. I'm using a number 10 round. Uh, it's a pretty big watercolor brush. You can go with something very small, whatever whatever you're comfortable with. So I like to put a little bit of detail in. Let me bring it down a little closer. So I'm gonna paint in some detail and I start off a little bit rigid, but if you've seen me watercolor before, I'm usually pretty loose. And then what I do is I rinse my brush I always have a paper towel with me and I'm going to go into that, hopefully you can see that, into that distressed oxide vintage photo and I'm going to throw that in and just bleed some of these edges. And you can pull that watercolor paint right into other papers. Just bear in mind that if it's a really thin paper, it's going to react a lot differently. So there's a little blue in that. I'll let that dry a little. We'll move over here. You can just keep playing with your snippet roll. By you, and it's a great way to use up all these tiny little pieces of watercolor that you have that you might have left over. So I'm gonna just throw some blue in this one behind it. Cause why not? And a little vintage photo just to tie in that vintage vibe. Get a little blue over here. I do like the crisp white in this. I think it's a nice contrast. 
um, so that it's all not just plain neutral colors. So the white is a nice contrast to add. And another way you can add interest is with the color of um, thread that you use to sew this with. So for me, I wanted to just use a neutral thread because I want the paper to be the shine and the star. But if your paper collection isn't all that exciting, you can always add a dramatic thread to your sewing machine. Take some of that off. And, um, and add texture in that way with different stitches and bright colored um, threads, things like that. So there's, there's just a little bit of watercolor. I didn't even paint the flower in. I just daubed it right in the center here. So another thing you can do is load up your brush with some stronger pigment and tie the blue in by splattering, which is always fun. You're never too old to splatter, right? <laughs> Let's have some fun with it. And again, you can leave this to the end. So you could have left the snippet roll the way it is and sew it. And then when you're ready to use this in a journal, you can add the watercolor paint. So again, you're working in a blue journal, you add the blue or the pink or whatever color it is. So here's some distressed oxide being splattered in now. And I just make a watery solution. You can dab it in a few spots. I'm gonna sew this wet, so I don't wanna make the paper too wet or it will tear. So water. And I just splatter that. And I mean, you can keep going and keep going. You can add cutouts, butterflies, stamps, whatever you want. So this is just kind of my spin on what I like to use, the stuff I have on my desk or what I have on hand, the tools I like to use, and my crafting approach, because everybody has their own approach to things. I'm gonna slide you up now, because I'm gonna get my sewing machine in here somehow. Let's see, Let's see if I can do it. And it, like the sewing's pretty self-explanatory. You know, I don't know if you can see me actually sewing with this camera or not. And it is wet, so normally I would let it dry. I just have a natural colored thread on my sewing machine because again, I want the, I want the paper to stand out more than the actual thread. But again, if you wanna add that drama, go ahead and throw some fun thread in your machine. And I'm literally just gonna wiggle it back and forth is pretty much all I do. Try to catch as many edges as I can to try and make the paper a little more stable. And my desk is so full, that's why I my hands through here holding the back end, because <laughs> it's gonna get jammed. So uh, the thread I'm using, sorry, the stitches I'm using is um, is the biggest setting on my machine. So they're not super fine, thin, miniature thread uh, needles. I'll show you in a sec what I mean by that. Just so that it doesn't tear my paper. And then you can go into a zigzag. If it, oh, the needle's gonna be out, there we go. Into a zigzag and throw that texture in. And you just kind of go back and forth. And what I like about this sewing approach is you could be a terrible sewer like me and nobody's the wiser. <laughs> because it's supposed to be wiggly and messy. So now maybe I'll shrink my stitch a little bit. Just for some different look. And I literally just zigzag. Gonna go to a straight now and move my paper around to catch as many edges as I possibly can. I hope you can see this on camera. Camera angle isn't the best. I'm gonna put some zigzag down here. This is a really fun way. Like nobody's snippet rolls are ever gonna look the same because everybody's approach is gonna be different. So that's always fun about these things. Okay, and one more pass and then we'll show ya. So 
like, yeehaw! <laughs> this is my kind of sewing. <laughs> Stress free sewing. Is our little section of snippet. I'll bring you down a little bit again. And make sure you're straight. And we'll do a little, little close up of what we did here. There, just like that. So it's got a collection of all kinds of goodies in there. And we didn't, you know, run out and buy all kinds of tiny little decorative pieces. We're using what we've made with our quickie sketches. And again, I, I do hope you give those a go. Um, and in this case, instead of watercolor, I did some sketching, which I think I showed you already. So this is the bird theme. So now I can roll this up if I want, or I can leave it flat, or I can cut it, whatever I want to do. And then it's ready to cut into tags, which we can do right now. I'm not sure how long this video has been, but it's as simple as just picking something you might like and cutting that section. And now you have this to play with, right? More manageable size. And all the, the decorative part has been done. So you can throw this through your little cutter that cuts a nice little tag shape and you have an instant tag. Or you can put just a piece of fabric or a piece of, let's say something like this. Whatever, using up more scraps, which is always great. And just fold that over and then gluing that on you can punch a hole in there put some thread in there whatever you want to do now you have an instant tag that's ready to go i would probably round the corners and make it a little more professional but that's the idea behind these i mean what a pretty cover some of these would make and uh so yeah have fun with it add different elements different textures different elements but use what you like and what you have on hand is the name of the game today so i hope you guys like that i hope it gives you some ideas uh, please uh, subscribe hit the like button it really helps my channel and uh, please leave a comment on things you might like to see or uh, some feedback on or maybe even ideas because people read other comments on there and maybe have suggestions and ideas on how to take it another step further all right guys have a great day bye